Hi friends, good afternoon. As always, it's a pleasure to connect with all of you on this live session. Uh, well, since the time we last spoke, uh, many things have changed, at least on the front of how we are working. Like this video is being shot from my home. But the good part is how you invest and how you should be investing hasn't changed. So with that backdrop, I'd like to cover what's happened in the last three, four months and more importantly, what you need to do going ahead. Friends, the month of March, in fact, starting January itself, when we were hearing more about the pandemic, it culminated into a significant global downturn in March. And that's where we saw the markets falling sharply in March. But what happened after that? Immediately, there was a response from the various central governments and the various uh, central banks, which has caused a synchronized rally across risk assets. In other words, the central banks have given additional liquidity, be it in US, be it in Japan, be it in Europe, be it China, back home in India as well. If you see, we've seen rate cuts happening. We've seen liquidity measures being undertaken by the Reserve Bank of India. And that has helped the sentiment improve towards equities. And in turn, we've seen global and local equities rally. So the pain of March, where we saw markets falling very sharply, to a very large extent has been eased. Not that all the losses have been erased, but the current market situation in terms of liquidity, in terms of sentiment, is far, far better than what it was in March. Of course, are we out of the pandemic problem still? The answer is no. We will need to learn how to live with the pandemic in terms of social distancing, in terms of taking necessary precautions. But from an investor and an investment point of view, this fall has given us a lot of opportunities to relook at how we allocate and relook as to what we need to do in the future. And I'll try to cover all of it as we move along. So history teaches us a lot of lessons. And in my 15 year career, I thought I had seen all the Teji, the Mandi or the rise and the fall of markets. But what could cause a fall like March and a pandemic? That's not something which none of us have seen for the last 100 years or. And it's another learning which Mr. Market has taught me at least and all of us. And in this downturn, many opportunities have arisen. And if one fears, so the worst thing that you can do as an investor is to get fearful and basically get out of the market at this point of time. That is not the solution. In fact, the first level of shortlisting at your end should be the asset allocation. What is asset allocation? It is essentially based on your own risk profile, judging how much money should come into equities, how much money should go into debt. And if you have been doing this consistently for long periods of time, generally your wealth creation will be taken care of. The mistakes which all of us make, most of us make in fact, is that when the markets are doing well, we'll be more than happy and willing to put money because greed will take us over. And when the markets are doing badly as in March, most of us will get frightened because of the fear of further fall and not invest further in the markets. So if you look at in India right now, the equity markets for the last three years have been very polarized. What do I mean by polarization? A few heavyweight stocks doing very, very well and the rest of the market in correction mode. Uh, if you see the mid caps and small caps in January 2018 have been correcting. That itself is presenting a great opportunity for us to pick names with good balance sheets and reasonable valuations. And also in the large cap space, there are so many sectors which I can think of. The entire power utility space. Now we can't live without power, right? Uh, we can't live without telecom, for example. And hence power and telecom stocks which are available at reasonable valuations today. Telecom in fact has seen significant consolidation as well and can uh, the sector can do well as we move along. If you look at the entire energy space, the entire metal space, because of the global cyclical downturn, you saw crude prices going to uh, multi-decade lows and also metal prices are in correction mode. Eventually, when the global economy opens up, eventually when so much money which is printed by the central banks resuscitates the economies, in other words, the, econ the money reaches the economies and the economies bounce back, the GDP globally grows, goes, starts growing and goes up, you will find the demand for metals also increasing. There will be restocking and that will essentially mean that your metals and energy pack can also do well. So what I'm hinting at essentially is that the cyclical space, the value space can actually do far better than the 
growth names than the high quality names which have done very very well for the last 6 to 7 years so a change in the direction of the market requires a big trigger and probably the pandemic has caused that trigger for a shift in leadership from the erstwhile quality fmcg high uh, the larger names to maybe the cyclical value and uh, names which have done very very badly in the past but can do well in the future because their valuations are very cheap their balance sheets are reasonable and of course many of them are in sectors without which we cannot survive uh, as a humanity so essentially what i'm saying at is there are enough opportunities in equities to make money from a stock picking from a sectoral perspective uh, even if you look at autos uh, there is eventually a demand uptick which will happen in india april was a month in which zero cars got sold in india i think we've seen the worst behind us and as we open up you will find many such sectors be it cement steel uh, auto power utilities telecom even banking and financial services now it's a sector which has got significantly derated in the last 2 3 months but eventually when the economy picks up the larger names among the banking and financial services which have good uh, managements and which are able to raise capital from the markets which have a good deposit franchise can eventually lead the rally as well so from an investor perspective from a fund management perspective there are enough sectors stocks available in the market what we'll need is patience what we'll need is to keep investing uh, systematically we'll need to keep investing in dynamic asset allocation funds because our belief is that the volatility in the markets is here to stay none of us can predict what will happen in the next 6 months next one year there is a us election which is coming around the corner we don't know the outcome of that we don't know what happens with covid we don't know what happens when the economy start opening up which sectors will do well or which sectors will do badly as such to start with but eventually value cyclical and those sectors without which humanity cannot sustain like power and telecom should ideally get re-rated as we move along so while i've given a good primer on first asset allocation then equity markets the sectors the triggers for equity markets of course continue to be the fact that whenever covid outbreak settles down uh, the amount of money which is there which has come fr- uh, or which is being uh, printed by the larger developed economies will eventually help the world do better one thing is also certain that interest rates globally have been coming down are coming down and in fact trending to zero across the globe even in us if you see the interest rates have trended towards zero in japan they've been with zero or below zero for long in europe they've been zero or below zero for the last few years and now if we see even in india interest rates are coming down very very sharply or very very fast what is the reason for that clearly there is a deflationary environment caused by the lockdown globally as well as in india and to basically kick start the engine we need to have lower interest rates hence you are finding interest rates across the board coming down and that is where we believe very very strongly that fixed income debt mutual funds are something which fits the investors bouquet very very well especially from their debt allocation perspective so when interest rates fall the bond prices go up and when you invest in a debt mutual fund you get the advantage of participating in the falling interest rates because your bond prices get reset that's one of the essential reasons why pension funds globally which have invested in bonds and those bond prices have basically gone up very sharply have made a lot of money by investing in fixed income in a way that the falling interest rates benefit the investor so as an investor for you to get the benefit of falling interest rates you also need to participate in fixed income debt mutual funds and if i look at the availability or if we look at the scope there are a lot of various options which are available right from temporary parking for shorter term as we call uh, the parking debt funds or for longer term investments in debt the options are there we request all of you to reach out to your financial advisor for your relationship manager and figure out what best suits your risk appetite in terms of debt mutual funds we are firm believers that in a falling interest rate environment in fact if the economy has to do well first interest rates have to come down the spreads right now in terms of the corporate bonds versus risk free rate without getting too jargonized 
essentially the RBI risk free rate which is set at around 4% right now approximately and if you look at the corporate bonds which are basically the companies who have issued bonds there is a spread available over and above that which essentially is making an investment in those bonds attractive. Of course, a lot of things have been said in the last few minutes, but you will have still so many questions in your mind. What will happen to currencies? What will happen to oil? What will happen to gold? Uh, well, uh, some of the answers we have, some of the answers we won't have. And of course, the answers which we have will also not be perfect and precise because in an ever-changing economic environment, it is very difficult to predict what is going to happen in the future. So what we urge all of you, of course, is that whatever questions come to your mind, please put it on the comments section or write to us and we will try to, of course, answer all of those. And uh, some of them I'll try to cover in my next video as well. Uh, but just to recap from a point of view of uh, what has been said so far. One, this pandemic is something which none of us expected. None of us knew what a pandemic was or experienced a pandemic. In fact, in the last uh, two, three weeks, if I may say so, pandemic, locust, uh, typhoon or uh, uh, cyclone as, we, as we've seen. Many things have happened, but the markets, of course, have their own mind. And if you see what has happened in the markets, we saw a month of March, which was very, very weak because of the FII suddenly pulling out money across all the emerging markets because there was a risk of, uh, risk of happening. And if you see what has happened post-March, stability has come in. Uh, there is some amount of uh, sentiment improvement and the markets have started to trend up again. As an investor, of course, we still believe that your investments in dynamic asset allocation category, your SIPs and STPs across any category, any uh, fund is something which will help you to create wealth over the long run. Please do not stop your SIPs, STPs, because if you do not invest in markets when they are down, it will end up hurting your long-term wealth creation. Typically, try and avoid to invest in, mon in markets when there is greed and you are basically very, very positive on markets like in 2017. Uh, that's where we end up making a mistake as an investor. And when the markets have fallen like March 2020 and uh, you get fearful, you don't invest more. So, of course, continue your investments, continue your SIPs and while none of us know what the future is in store, asset allocation is something which will always help you to live or create long-term wealth while being able to sleep peacefully and that I think is most important. And as part of asset allocation, in falling interest rate environment, we believe that debt mutual funds which participate when interest rate falls or the bonds which in which the debt mutual funds are invested or the instrument in which the debt mutual funds are invested, they participate on the way uh, when the interest rates come down and that helps you as an investor. So in an environment where interest rates are likely to come down globally as well as in India, we strongly recommend that you should look at debt, in, debt mutual funds from your investment perspective because when interest rates come down, you need to participate in that as well in terms of your wealth and hence that will be provided by the debt mutual funds. So friends, uh, thank you for the tuning in. I look forward to again connecting with all of you, hopefully in an environment where the fear of the pandemic is behind us and we quickly are able to reach uh, the same level of economic activity as we were before the pandemic. And in fact, if you look at India, uh, we have a super platform right now to actually do very well as a country. Our foreign exchange reserves are strong. The current account deficit is in control. And if you see as an investment house, India will likely to see a lot of foreigners investing in India, a lot of foreign direct investment, foreign institutional investors coming into equities. And also in the debt markets, you will find money coming in. So I'm very hopeful that while... Uh, the past two three months have been very very challenging the next few quarters and the next two three years are something where india regains its glory in terms of its manufacturing prowess and more and more factories are set up in india uh, with uh, foreigners also coming in and setting up their factories in india to cater to the demands of the domestic indian market thank you so much it's always a pleasure to connect with all of you 
and uh, take care and looking forward to seeing all of you again next time thank you mutual fund investments are subject to market